I don't believe it, I've just got myself, 10 minutes ago I've got myself a phenomenal little artefact. I've only went and done one better. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire and a beautiful, beautiful March day. So we are back on the gallows, which were up here on this high ground. It's just me today at the moment. I might be joined by some of the other guys. I've sent them a message to let them know that I am out and about. I'll keep my intro brief. You know where I am. I've had a few hammered coins off this field, quite a lot of Georgian coinage as well, and a few military items too. So fingers crossed, there's going to be more to come. I also have to say a huge, huge thank you. 19,500 subscribers. Unbelievable. I keep saying to myself that the bubble is going to burst. I can't keep growing at the speed that I'm growing at, so I'm just enjoying it while it lasts. So welcome to all the new subscribers and uh, thank you for everyone's support. So enough waffle from me, let's see what we find. It's only taken me five minutes to get my first signal and as ever I'm on the XP Deus 2 and I'm going with sensitive full tones with square tones. We've got our first digger and I tell you what, it could be a coin. Solid 88, 89, and it sounds pretty good, I have to say. That would be a great start. Oh, it's vanished. Oh, it's stuck to my spade. It's a tin can. Well, there you go. We got nothing but tin cans the other day on this field. Well, we got a few good things too, but history repeats itself. Oh well, I always film the first hole. Oh well, it's just been tin can, aluminium, tin can, tin foil. That's the problem with this field having once been a, a berry farm. All the workers just discarding all their lunch stuff. But... Seventy-seven on the hope that maybe, just maybe, this isn't junk. We will dig it up and find out. Ah, ah, ah. Well, it's green and it's round. I don't need the pinpointer. Look at that there. That's not a coin though. It's too thin. Must be a dandy button. It is. It's a dandy button. So, have we got any decoration on there? It's a few lines, maybe. Let me get the toothbrush. Give it a wee rub-a-dub. Well, it's our first good find. As I say, it's taken a while. Virgin fields are always normally chock-a-block full of stuff. But this one, even more so because of all the human activity in the last... 30 or 40 years with it having previously been a berry farm for strawberries, but I can't see anything obvious there, but it is a dandy button. So this is Georgian, probably around 1760 to 1820, and so-called because, oop, dropped it, so-called because there was a group of young men who were called the Dandy Boys. And they wore these oversized buttons with colourful clothing and they became known as the Dandy Boys. So there you go. That's a good start. And incidentally, just where I got that Dandy button, look, that is the Hangman Hill. That is the Gallows Hill. So you do wonder, was someone down here in the 1700s watching a hanging? Ugh, God forbid. We've another digger. Somewhere there. It's a bit jumpy. 7882, but well worth a go. Let's see what happens. Yep, something's something's out right about there. 
Is it something good? Or is it more junk? What's that? That is a bit of lead. Mm, that's a wee bit different. It's not a bullet, or is it a bullet? It might be a bullet. Let's see. Well, it's got a little sort of recess there. Any rings on it? No. So I don't think it's a bullet. It's possibly a weight. Could be a weight. It's kind of been bashed in on the top there, but maybe there was a suspension loop in there somewhere. Or it's a little gaming piece or something maybe, but it's a little chunk of lead anyway. Could have a fair bit of age to it, so let me know in the comments below. We've got a 50. 50-53. That's what... Uh, that's what Pete's gold ring came at. And generally, I dig everything from about 45 or over, but also go by the tone. So, a wee gold ring? I wouldn't say no. I suspect though it will probably be tin foil or foil of some description. that. That's it. Well, it's not foil, so that's a good start. I think it's going to be a tarpaulin thing. Mm. I think so. Yeah, it is. It's a little tie-down ring off of some kind of tarpaulin or plastic sheet. Oh well. Well, virtually next to the tarpaulin we've got another signal. This one a bit better though. 85. A little bit chirpy. Hope it's not going to be another bloody tin can. Honestly. Well, we're out. It's very squeaky. It's not going to be a coin. Oh! Aha! Uh -huh. Well, it's better than a tin can. I think it's a musket ball. It is. It's a lead musket ball. It's uh, clearly impacted onto something. Or someone. But that is a great big musket ball. Look at the calibre of that. You imagine that coming flying at you. So made of lead, but as you can see, it's clearly had an impact. Date-wise, probably 16, 17 very beginning of the 1800s. My last hole was tin can number 10. Number 10. Can you believe it? So trust me, to put these videos together, there's a lot of outtakes. This one, 84, 86. I'm hoping, hoping it's not tin can number 11. Oh, don't know. Really don't know. Better not be. Am I out or am I not out? I have done a very good job. Oh, my God. Look at that. Number 11. Damn. I tell you, I'm losing the will to live with the amount of junk that I'm getting today. Way beyond what I got the other day. 70, 71, I'm hoping at least for something copper or lead based. I suppose it could be a, a coin, like a turner or such like. Well, it still sounds okay at the moment. Come on. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Try there. I'd settle for a little cat badge. Some militaria. And I tell you what, it's not militaria. It's yet another bit of junk. My God. 
Please make this a good signal. Eighty three, eighty four. I mean, who knows? Tin can number fifteen, or maybe a little half penny, fairly shallow. I think it's going to be more aluminium because it's just got that squeak to it. Oh, stony ground. Very stony ground. Right, come on, be out this time. I don't want to have to dig to. Oh no. No, 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 no. No. Look how old that is. That's an old Pepsi. Oh my goodness. This is hard going. This is this is about the worst. Well, worst. This is about the hardest days detecting I've had in a long time. This is all over the place. It's a way up at 99. It's a way down at 80. Might just be a huge bit of iron, but I don't think it is. We've got something there that looks pretty round. It's not a croto bell, is it? That's it anyway. Oh wow. Oh wow, finally we might have found something good. I tell you what, I think it is some kind of bell. Look at the bottom of it. Oh, at last. As you can see, it wasn't even deep. Just under the surface. I think we have. I think we've finally got a... I think we've finally got some kind of relic of such... or such like. So it has to be, isn't it? Some sort of bell, look. Some sort of bell. There's the fitting on the top where it would have connected on. And it looks like it's probably been painted at some point. Let's see if we can poke it through or not. There we can. Right, it's going to take me a hell of an amount of time to get all this uh, mud out. So why don't I do this off camera to save you all having to watch forever and ever. And that is definitely going to be a bell, isn't it? So that is potentially my first decent sort of historical find. Right, I'll clean this up off camera and maybe, just maybe, we've got an ancient relic. I'll be right back to you. Well folks, I am over the moon. Perseverance pays off. Uh, that is indeed a bell. Now unfortunately because it's lost its little uh, loop at the top, it's very difficult to make it ring. Let me get my brush out of the way. But that's about as close as you can get. See, if you look inside there, you'll see a little iron ball. So that is some sort of bell. Whether it was attached to an animal, I mean, dare I say, maybe it was waved about when the condemned man or woman was coming to be to be hung or to be burned alive. Maybe it was um maybe it was rattled by the audience to try and whip up a little bit of uh, enthusiasm. I mean who knows? I've got no idea how old that might be. But that is I think it's going to be at least a few hundred years old. But I mean that could be that could be hundreds and hundreds of years old. So um, I'm really, really not sure. I can't see any obvious decoration on it. But it is clearly been in the ground for some time. Could be an animal bell, could be a crotal bell of some description. I've only ever found one other crotal bell intact, which I got last year on a medieval site. So there you go. Let me know in the comments below. Perseverance pays off. I'm a happy man. Well, this one is a 50. which I suspect is going to be more foil, but the only way to find out is to dig the hole. I hope it's not deep. Right, it's not deep, but it's a little bit stony. No, oh, there it is. It's going to be a shotgun cap. There it is. Damn. I don't believe it. I've just got myself... Ten minutes ago I've got myself a phenomenal little artefact 
I've only went and done one better. Look at that from a depth of about 12 inches. I think we've got ourselves possibly a little bottle or something. Oh, it's a wee, uh, it's got a wee handle on it. It's like a wee jug or something. I think it's going to be pewter. That is incredible. What a stunning little find that is. My God. Perseverance pays off. Right. Let's get the brush out. You beauty. Honestly, see some days. Oh, we've got writing. We've got letters. You beauty. Oh, we've got more letters. Quarter. Or is it garter? No, it's quarter. Quarter. Quarter of a gill. G-I-L-L. -L, which is an old measure. Look at all the stamps. So that's like weights and measures. Stamps there all along the side. Right, we'll have a look at them in a wee minute. Once we've cleaned this off. You beauty. Look at that, it's intact. The handle's quite badly bent, which is no surprise. It's got a bit of damage on it. Missing a wee bit of the rim. Have we got any data on the bottom? Normally you get a stamp somewhere on the bottom as well. Maybe not on this occasion. Well, that is stunning. Look at that. That is stunning. That looks Georgian to me. Be interested to see what the uh, marks say. Right, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn you off for just now. I'm going to dig it out. Um, and thanks again, Les, for this little implement. It's been a, it's been a godsend recently. Um, so I'll dig it out and I'll get right back to you. Well, the XP DS2 and the 13-inch coil have done it again. That is a thing of beauty. Look at that. That is a little measure, a little jug, or a little, um, well... A measure, basically. Um, that's it dug out on the inside. I think it's pewter. And, as I said before I cleaned it, you've got quarter of a gill. Now, a gill, if I remember right, a gill was a quarter of a pint. A pint is 568 millilitres. So... Let me do some maths here. What's a quarter of 567? I'm sure you're all shouting at the screen now. It's about 140, 142 maybe? Now, if this is a quarter of a gel, then that is about 35 millilitres, if my maths is any good. This is a measure for alcohol. Some of you may or may not be familiar with a, f a, a, a nursery rhyme, which was Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and then I can't remember the rest. But um, Jack and Jill, the nursery rhyme, is supposed to be based on measures of alcohol, because a Jack was an eighth of a pint, and a Jill was a quarter of a pint. And during the reign of Charles the first or second, so way back in the 1600s, they reduced the size of a gill, but they still charged the same amount of tax, and it caused a lot of problems. And I gather, certainly I've been told, that that's where the nursery rhyme Jack and Jill comes from, or it's one of the suggestions. Now, it's also very, very lucky, because look what XP metal detectors gave me. This has been in my possession, waiting for a moment like this. Because I'm too embarrassed to admit that I'm losing my eyesight, because I'm getting old. So, thank you XP for sending this little magnifying glass. And, if I can figure out how to work it, there we go. So that's six times zoom, that's three times zoom. So let's see if this is going to work on a video or not. I'm not really sure if it will. Right, for a start, I think we're going to need more zoom for you guys. 
this might end in disaster, but let's see. In fact, I'm not even sure we need it with a three times zoom. It's pretty good. Right, let me see. What am I doing here? I'm trying to look through a lens, look through a camera. Right. Let's try six times, see what happens. This is too difficult to do with a screen. Right, we've got a G and an R with a crown above it. Which would be George Rex. We've got a 4-7. Can't quite make that out. It's possibly a head, is it? A person. And then we've got a quarter of a Jill. G-I-L-L. -L. In fact, I don't actually really need it, do I? You can probably see quite well with that. Well, I'm not sure what that is. There's lots of different letters. There's an 8, a 20. There's another stamp there with a crown above it. There's a GR. And I'm not sure what that is. Is it a 443? Or is it just a 3? Right, I'm not really... Not really sure. So I'm going to have to go over to all you experts on this one. Now, there's a creepy aspect to this. In England... And I think in Wales as well, traditionally, spirits like whiskey and rum and brandy were sold by the gill. Now, a gill, or should I say, a, well, a quarter of a gill in Scotland was a measurement of spirit. But in England and Wales, it's a fifth or a sixth of a gill, so it's smaller. Now, in millilitres, it's 35 mil. So in Scotland today, we still serve 35ml spirits. When you go to a pub and ask for a single, you'll get a 35ml in most places. In contrast, in England, you'll only get 25 or 30, depending on whether you, whether the pub um, uses a, a fifth or a sixth of a gel. Now, the creepy thing is, before you were hung, you were offered something called the last drop you got a little swig of alcohol before you fell through the gallow floor and it became known as the last drop. Now that is kind of creepy. Could that be a measure given to someone before they fall through the floor of a gallows? That is very, very creepy. Right, that is a stunning find. I'm blown away with that. I love the bell, but that's even better. So I'll be interested to hear all your comments. As per usual, I'm rambling on, so I'm going to stop talking. Right, let's see if there's any other goodies to be had. I'm scouting out all around this area. So I've got that bell and also got the, the little quarter of a gill just off to the side of where the gallows mound is. And here... We've got a pretty nice 91. It sounds a little bit too high for for uh, aluminium, so it would be nice if it was something good. Uh, could it be a coin? I don't want to say so because I've not exactly been doing a good job so far with my guesswork. I think it's going to be junk because it's in the grass, is it? Right, somewhere in here. So it's very shallow. There's something. Oh no, that's a stone. Oh, there's something else. It's lead. Very shallow lead. Well, it's kind of shaped like a... like a rectangle. Is it just a... Just fold it open just a little bit so I can see inside, but... I don't know, is there any writing on it? Any decoration, it might just be a wee off-cut of uh, roofing lead. Don't see anything obvious there. Hmm. And on the inside, yeah, there's a funny wee score there, a wee straight line. Open it a little bit more. 
Nope, I think it's just a, a little fragment of roofing lead, possibly. Still, it's a find, and it's better than aluminium. 72. 74. Again, not the best. I really don't care what it is, as long as it's not made of aluminium. I'm getting fed up of tin foil and aluminium. Well, I think we're out. Hoping to get a little bit of military stuff. Maybe. Seems I've had two bits. And two uh, outings. Oh, there's something there. Well, I think it comes under the category of tinfoil-y. Well, not tinfoil, but aluminium aluminum me is that a word? Related. Junk. Well, one thing that's eluded me is a coin. Now, it's either going to be tin can number 17, or it's going to be maybe a half penny. Please be a half penny. It's a tin can. Damn. Well, at least it's uh, it's not aluminium. A little bit of copper. Copper alloy. Just a strip. A quail. Well, this might be good news. 61, 62. It's a bit of an iron tone there as well, but tin foil normally comes in around 50, 55, and aluminium tends to come in in the 80s. So I'm hoping 71, 68, 71, it's not going to be tin foil or aluminium. Maybe lead? Well, I think it's lead. That is lead. Is it a thing or is it just a thing? Nope, I think it's just a, a piece of lead pipe that's been cut off. Oh well, better than aluminium. I didn't film this one, it was a Screamer, 83, 85, 88. And so far I can't see any aluminium, or can I? What is that? Ah, oh, I don't believe it. More. Again, we're in between tin foil and aluminium. And a 70, 71. Sounds fairly shallow. Ground not too stony. Well, I was wrong. Well, it's not aluminium, it's a great big lump of iron. I think it's going to be a big ring thing. Oh, look at that. That's the shackle for a condemned prisoner. Well, it could be. Otherwise, it could just be something tractor-related. Let me know in the comments below. Could even be the rim of a vessel, could it? An iron pot. Yeah, could be. Maybe. Let me know in the comments. Well, I didn't film it. I wish I had of. I don't need the pinpointer. Came through 70. I'm, I'm going along the side of a road. You'll probably hear the odd car coming past. I've just had junk, 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 and more junk. But right there is something round. It could be a button. Came through at a 70, 71. Oh, it's not. That's another tarpaulin ring. Oh, damn it. I'm filming this one just in case. It's a screamer, 82, 85. It's too big to be a coin. It's going to be a tin can, surely. There's a bit... Could even be two signals. Haven't had a coin yet, which is really strange. Really strange. Normally get a coin, at least one coin every single time I'm out. And it's more tin can. Damn. Now this has to be the most tin can infested field I've ever, ever, ever metal detected in, in my life. 
That sounds a little bit crisper. 85. And that's the problem. Aluminium. Tin cans just come in like coins. Now I could see something. Kinda looks oval. It could be a stone. It's not a stone. It is ah well it's better than a it's better than a tin can. It's a horse decoration. It's a horse boss or a saddle boss made of lead. Right, I can see a name on it, but I'm going to clean this off camera because it might well be the local farm that's written on it and I don't want to show that to the world. So I'll be right back to you in a minute. It is indeed, as expected. It's a saddler's badge. And you can see a very Scottish name there when I get the bendy thumb on it, which is McLachlan. McLachlan Saddler. And below it is the name of the farm. <laughs> so I can't show you. Obviously it's been personalised so that Mr McLachlan knew, knew who he sold the saddle to in later in life. And this is a little boss made of lead that would have been on the underside of the saddle. But that is a nice little piece of social history. From the old heavy horses, the big shires or Clydesdales that would have pulled the plough. So date wise, it's probably going to be 1800s I would guess, but could be into the beginning of the 1900s. So well done Mr McLachlan. You're I hope your saddles lasted as long as your saddle badges did. A very nice find. And I'm sure the farmer will be very happy to receive this as a gift. Still hunting for the elusive coin. 84, 85. Definitely, possibly, tinfoil, or sorry, aluminium, should I say. Well, sounds a bit better. Come on. I haven't not had a coin on a dig in ages. Not that I've had a bad day, let's be honest. It's been fantastic. Where is it? It's there. No, it's not. Ah, oh, no, look. What is that? More aluminium. Something hydraulic. Damn. Hydraulic oil. Ah, they're even rolling it up to make it look like it's silver. <laughs> Damn. I'm running out of time to find a coin today. My lift is on the way. 69.70. Oh, it's easier digging down here. Down at the very bottom of the field. Come down by the old trackway. See if we can find a coin down here. Got a couple of Georgian cartwheels before so I'm hoping there's going to be more not that I've had a bad day by any means but I would love to get a coin oh I can't find it surely it can't be that deep well it's in the hole I'm just going to need to dig a little bit deeper get right back to you well, all that for a little sheet of lead, but it was deep, probably about 13 inches, so at least it's not aluminium. Well, folks, that is me. The coin eluded me, um, but I can't complain. That was a pretty rough day in terms of the amount of junk signals that I got. Uh, I dug over 80 targets, 80, 80. And uh, let's have a little look at what uh, the good stuff was. But before I do, I bought myself a little light box. So I'm going to do a little summary at the end. And if I'm able to find anything out online about some of the better things that I found, then uh, I'll leave a little bit of additional information. So don't go anywhere. That'll be added on at the end. So the three best finds. Well, first of all, I love my little bell. Absolutely love it. No idea how old that could be. It'd be fantastic if it was medieval. If it had some sort of function in a gallows, 
that would be even better. But uh, yeah, copper, whoop, copper, copper alloy, and uh, a little iron clanger inside. That's probably not seen the light of day in centuries. So if you know anything about that, let me know in the comments below. Star find though has got to be this little quarter of a gel, which kind of makes me feel a little bit sort of spooky <laughs> just holding it. It would be beyond unbelievable if that was associated with the gallows. Could you imagine the last drop before you fell through the floor of the gallows? 35 mil, what we'd now call a nip or a single. And who knows, could have measured out a little shot of whiskey or rum for someone just before they met their maker. So I'll have a little look online, see if I can discover some more of these uh, labels and I'll get back to you in the light box. See if we can learn anything else. Fantastic find. And then also this little item here, which is McLachlan, the saddler, the saddle maker. And uh, this will be a nice little gift for the, the farm owner, seen as the name of his farm is printed on it. I'm sure he'll be very happy to receive that. And then lastly, the little array of copper and uh, copper alloy and lead items, shotgun caps, um, musket ball. This is possibly a little lead weight, I think. Maybe a bullet, but I think a lead weight. And then fragments of bits and pieces of lead, aluminium, um, more lead. But as I say, I think I had somewhere around 20 tin cans, as in like Coke cans. But then I had quite a number of fragments of aluminium and tin foil and such like. But dug over 80 targets and effectively, I only got five good targets, which are the musket ball and the dandy button, and then the three items that I've already shown you. In some ways, a bit of a frustrating day with all the junk. Trust me, the amount of outtakes is just incredible. But three really, really good quality finds, which hopefully I'm going to tell you a little bit more about in a moment. So don't go anywhere. Uh, and also just to say, Again, 19,500 subscribers. Unbelievable. If I could hit 20,000, my God, what a milestone. Considering I think I was looking for 9,000 for the 1st of January. And for, what are we talking, possibly mid-March? Who knows? For my birthday, I might hit 20,000, which would just be unbelievable. So in the meantime, 19,500 subscribers. I'm blown away. Thank you for all the support. And if you're not already subscribed and you like what you see, then hit that button. Doesn't cost you a penny. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next dig. Let's have a look at some of these other items again. Well, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out, but I thought I'd give it a go because I've invested in a little light box in the hope that you get a better view of the finds when I get back home. Now, I never clean my finds with water. I just give them a light brush. That's just the way that I do it because I don't want to, to damage or remove any of the surface. And uh, I've just left them really as they were. But let's take a closer look at this little, I don't know what you would call it, a measure maybe. But hopefully the uh, the lettering that you saw in the field has become a lot, lot easier to decipher. So we'll start from this side. We'll zoom you in just a little bit more. And you can see quarter gill, G-I-L-L. -L. Now, this is where it starts to get a bit harder. Now this mark just here... It looks like a crown, possibly a letter V, and then maybe an R below it. Then on this side, we have got a couple of letters or numbers. I think it's an 8 and a 9, possibly. Then here, it looks like a G, an R, and a number 3. Then a C, 2, 0. 
And then we're back again with a crown and I think a G, an R and a 3 once again. Then here another crown, G, R, 4, 4, 8. Then another crown, because, you know, why not stick as many crowns on there as we can, but a crown and a 4 and a 7. And then lastly, well I say lastly, but there's another, but we've got another crown We've got a V, an R, and a 3, I think this is. Then we've got a quarter of a Jill written again. And then, just to top it all off, we've got a V, an R, a crown, and a 3, and a 6. So that is a pretty um, huge number of stamps for such a tiny, tiny little jug or little measure. Um, as I mentioned before, a quarter of a gel, that's about 35 millilitres. And uh, so far, I've not really been able to discover anything of these stamps other than VR possibly stands for Victoria Regina. Now, 3-6 might be a location, and I found a few places online that have a VR 3-6, and they're from Glasgow, which is the biggest city in Scotland on the west coast. Here looks also like a VR. Now, I thought it was a 3, but it could actually be an S below it. The crown in the 4-7, I have no idea. The GR, possibly George Rex, and then 448, no idea. This one here looks more like an E and an R with a 3 below it. So really, I have got no idea. To me, the style of it, it looks Georgian. It looks to me like it's George the Third. That sort of era. But it may be that it's been reused and as a result, it's been stamped during the Victorian period. And that's maybe what the VR means. But I'm open to suggestions. So if you know, then let me know. Other than that, I can't see any other marks. Everything else seems to be plain. And on the bottom, nothing. No stamps whatsoever. So it's a nice little thing though. Very nice, and it may well have a bit of a a bit of a dubious history. And the next thing is the little bell. So hopefully now as the result of the light box you can see the little clangor inside, which is iron, and the rest of it is copper or copper alloy. I wouldn't say it's brilliantly made, so it might have a bit of age to it. You can see it's got a crack there. And another small crack there. And on the top, there would have been some sort of attachment. Maybe a loop where it would have attached possibly to an animal. Or possibly to some sort of, um, some sort of horse-drawn carriage maybe. But I cannot see any decoration on it. Can't see any letters, can't see any stamps. So I'm a bit confused as to how old it might be, but still, it is a nice little thing. So two little items, which hopefully some of you might be able to give me a little bit more information on. So hopefully the light box worked, made it a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and if it did, then let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd be interested to see. So, hopefully, a good little investment, my little light box. And hopefully you like my little card as well, the Scottish Detectorist, just to give you some scale.